Hello and good evening, this is uh, Ruth Pozuelo from Curval.com and uh, today is time again for DAX Fridays. Um, we are going to go through two functions, the all function and the all except function. So for today's video we are going to use Excel and we are going to use DAX Studio. What DAX Studio is, in case you don't know, is a free Excel add-in. I will post the link on the description box so you can uh, go ahead and download it. Uh, that allows us to understand what our functions do in the background. So don't worry, it's not complicated and I'm going to show you how it works. So let's go ahead and uh, click on DAX Studio. The first thing will happen is to recognize that I have a file with a Power Pivot model. So it says, would you like to open it? We say, yes, connect. And then my Power Pivot model will be loaded here. Now, this is what DAX does very well. We're going to explain the all function. And the first thing to say about all is that it's a very useful function that returns the rows or the columns on the table, depending on how you write the function. So first of all, let's return a table, the entire table. So we write evaluate, you have to do that in DAX Studio. And then we write all and product data. And then to run it, you press F5. Okay, so here's how our table looks like. Our all function has returned the entire table. So we have product ID, product name, date, sales cost, and product category for bikes. So for the all function, if you just give a table, it will return the entire table. Now, you can also write all so it returns just the column so if we add a column name f5 it will return the column for the table that you specified okay you can actually specify multiple columns let's do that for example here product data and then product category for example and then f5 and then it will give us both columns this is uh, not very useful by its own but it's extremely useful when we're using it for more complex calculations now there is something important about um, all the, that you need to understand when it comes what it what it actually does on um, on a report. So for that we're going to go back to Excel. And now I have as I have explained on another video, I have installed Power Pivot Utilities. And what it does is that allows me to, for example, list the table of relationships. I will post a link to the Power Pivot Utilities uh, add in in the description box in case you're interested to download it. So if I click here on list measures, it will list all the measures I have in this model. And if we format them so we can read it better, you will see that I have a few uh, measures. One that counts uh, rows on the entire table. The other one that counts uh, all product data all product data category as we did in DAX Studio, and then uh, all except we will explain in a minute. So when we go here, you see count products is actually counting the number of products per category. So the number of city bikes available is actually two. You can see it here, a children bike and city bike. The number of count products for mountain bikes is also two. You have it here in green, uh, cyclocross and mountain bike. And the number of road bikes is three and we have one blank. So count response to the field that exists in our report. Now, if we go to count all products, this is this one, 
that is counting the entire table. So it's ignoring the filter that I have set up here. And you might say, okay, maybe it's ignoring because I have a category column instead of a product column. So let's put the product name, we remove the category, and it still says eight. So it's ignoring again the filters that are available in this table. This moment it is filtering by product name. So children bike, in reality, there's just one, but because it's counting all products, it's ignoring this filter. And the next measure product data product category is actually doing exactly the same thing. It's ignoring the filter here and it's saying, okay, how many categories do I have? I have road bikes, mountain bikes, city bikes, and a blank. So I have four. And it doesn't matter if you put product or if we put product category, the results will always be the same. It will ignore the filters. Now, the last thing I want to show you today is the all except product category. And for that, I want to go back to DAX Studio. And what all except does is basically what it implies and is it returns all except table and then you have to have a column. So product ID and then F5. And what it's doing is returning all columns except for product ID. And uh, the reason why you would want to do that is, well, in case you don't want to go through all the columns on the table, it's easier to remove the ones that are not there. But you have to be careful with this because if you would introduce new columns to the table, all except will include it in the results unless you add it to the all except measure. So be careful with that. Maybe it's the behavior you want, but if you don't want it, you have to be aware and you have to add it to your measure. So this is all for today. Um, I'm really hoping you enjoyed this video and uh, you have a better understanding of all and all except. Uh, if you like the video, please let me know by liking it. Um, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, let me know either on the comment box or any of the social channels listed below. And uh, subscribe, I publish Power BI videos every week. Have a great evening. Bye.